But first, with uh, so much of the country preparing for another cold snap over the next couple of days, one designer has come up with a dress, as you saw there, that looks more like a duvet than an item of clothing, to be honest. Well, Jo Elvin is very clever, and uh, she's done her own thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the duvet dress. Basically, Joel. This is my catwalk moment, Lorraine. What do you think? Um, <laughs> even, speechless. Even speechless. you. Even you. Now, is this a good... I mean, that duvet dress just looked like a duvet, right? I think it's an amazing... Look, I look stupid, obviously. No, I but think you're I, carrying it off rather well. Stop being polite. <laughs> but I love uh, the, the duvet trend, actually. There's been some actually high-end designers, Ports 1961, Loewe, doing it. And it kind of makes sense. We've had duvet coats, and now we're love going to have duvet, duvet dresses. And the, I absolutely love those ones. And the one that the Sunday Times journalist, Sydney Lima, tested on the weekend from Sportmax, 1,200 British pounds, mind you. What? But I love the pockets. I, I actually, I would do that. Well, it's comfortable, and I'm all for I that. I think it's kind of cool. I'm all for that, to but think... I'm, I'm not paying that for it. Well, exactly. Well, well, I think this probably cost me about £25. To think my husband laughed at what I actually wore to do the show today, and he didn't even know about this. <laughs> didn't know about that. Uh, but it, it is warm, I'll tell you that. No, it is yeah. fair. It is hot. And maybe we, maybe we do that, but you're right, I love a duvet coat. Yes. I really do. Yes, yeah, stick I mean, with that, that because this is in serious danger of malfunctioning. So, yeah, but, uh, but I... I do have some practical ways Good. to beat the cold. Excellent. Now, I don't know if you saw Trini Woodall. Everybody uh, loves Trini on, on Instagram. Oh, she yes. pulled out of her bag this scrunchy little nifty hood from Cos. But I've got this one from Primark. Which kind of is exactly the same it's exactly thing. Exactly the same, yeah. Five pounds. Do you know that is really it's good? And does it switch up quite genius. small? You really can put it in, scrunchy. So you can put it into your bag. Perfect for a wee dog of, walkers, Lorraine. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. But it's kind of like a really sophisticated rain mate. Did it's you used, gorgeous. Did you used to have rain mates when no, you were? No, I don't know about that. Well, you're in Australia, Australia yeah, you probably we, didn't. We, but we, it was just a wee plastic hoodie thing, and you kept it in your bag. Yeah. Um, and you brought See, it out whenever it rained, but I that's mean, better. It might not be easy to believe me right now, but I know chic. <laughs> and I think this is a little bit it's chic. Cheap. It's very But cheap. the other thing that I've got for you, I think somewhere in my hand, this, these things oh, are about brilliant. genius. They're so hand good, warmers. They? Yeah. These are $4.99 for a pack of two from lifesystems.co.uk. I'm just going to show you. You crack this little thing in here, the little metal thing. And then it gets warm. Talk amongst it? yourselves while I figure that out. But do you and, know it and it turns into, it can go brilliant. up to something like 54 degrees Celsius. Gorgeous in your little duvet coat. Absolutely. See, oh, for the football... Oh, it just started working. They're great for the football. I used to actually, I don't yeah. know if you're supposed to do it, but I used to put them in my hands and also just down yeah. there. Yeah, and it smells just amazing. It's got a lovely sort of, like, eucalyptus oh, smell. They've got yeah. incredibly sophisticated yeah. since my day. Oh. I'm telling <laughs> you, oh, it's, what, an, what a time to be alive. That's, it's fantastic. We'll see you later, though. You're going to talk to I us about striking changed. fashion. And also, I think you, maybe you should. <laughs> Although, can you imagine just going to sleep in that? It'd be lovely. It'd yeah. be nice. Um, Dr Amir's with us. Um, Amir, any tips from you for keeping warm just now? these things are great yeah they are great Lorraine I've got some of them but definitely some tips here so layer up rather than one kind of big woolly jumper put different layers on and the layers trap warmth between them and keep you warmer for longer identify where the drafts in your house are coming from underneath doorways window frames keyholes get them all plugged up with either towels or duvets whatever you've got lying around block up those drafts uh, keep moving try and keep moving every hour whether you're at home or in the office it keeps that circulation going and this is my favorite tip when you sit down put your feet up because cold air is all at the bottom so if you put your feet up it avoids the coldest part of the the house and keeps those toes nice and warm very, very good advice. Now, look, we're talking vitamins this morning, aren't we? There's so many options out there. Do they actually do us any good, do you think? I That's mean, is a very it good. It? Yeah, it's a good question, Lorraine. The evidence is patchy for multivitamins at the moment. What I would say is you people should be getting vitamins and minerals, which are essential for bodily functions, uh, through our diet. We should be eating a lot of whole foods rather than processed foods. But if I had to tell you my top three supplements to take, these are them. So vitamin D, really important for absorbing calcium, which we need for bones, muscles, our mood, our immune system. And we get most of it for, from sunlight. There isn't enough of that through the winter months. So take a vitamin D supplement between October and March. And if you have to wear clothing outside, 
outside in the summer months for religious or medical reasons, take that vitamin D supplement throughout the year. Right. Now, my second tip is folic acid. If you're trying for a baby, so don't wait until you're pregnant. If you're trying for a baby and in the first three months of pregnancy, you should be taking a folic acid supplement. It's really important for baby's brain and spinal cord development. And my third one is cod liver oil or omega-3 supplements. And what these do, there's some evidence, it's still more research is needed, but there's some evidence that they can reduce your risk of heart attack. So those are my top right. three. Okay, that's really sound advice. I remember as a kid, we used to get a spoonful of cod liver oil. Blech, it was disgusting, but it actually did. Yeah. It actually, well, we didn't get many colds, that's for sure, and we were okay. Now, look, what about the difference between, we see own brand vitamins, you know, sort of relatively cheap vitamins, and then much more expensive ones. It's the same vitamin, but I mean, what are you getting for more money? Not much, really. You're paying for the brand there rather than the content. So, you know, we've got a cost of living crisis going on. So if you are going to buy a multivitamin, get one, uh, get the br own brand version. Don't go for the branded one. You know, cheap generic ones that are just as good. Look at the back, make sure they've got the daily recommended levels in. Uh, but essentially, if you're not getting it from Whole Foods, then yes, perhaps buy the cheapest version you can find. Exactly. Now, look. You have a fantastic, well, it's a drink that Mama Can gives to you and it could keep um, us all healthy. I've got it as well. Tell me what's in this. <laughs> oh, it now, smells great. Even though it's me and my sister who have the medical degrees, everybody rings my mum for medical yes. advice because she practiced kind of old Indian traditions. Now, she swears by this, keeps you warm. If we so much as sneeze Lorraine, she brings over a cup of this. It's, it's called golden milk. It's coconut milk with turmeric, which has some anti-inflammatory properties, black pepper, which activates that turmeric, cinnamon, which has uh, antioxidant properties, and ginger as well, all of which can help with sinus congestion. I put the recipe on my Instagram. If you're feeling you've got the lurgy, give it a go with a couple of paracetamol. It's like a hug in the mug from Mama Khan. Who doesn't want that? Cheers, it's lovely. Mm. Mine isn't as orange as yours, but it's it smells great. It's lovely and it's it and, nice. and warm. Well, we have it. We have it nice and warm. I really like this. Nice now, look, before you go, I want to ask you because according to TikTok, we shouldn't be making our beds in the morning. This has gone viral. Have a look at this. This is why you should never make your bed in the morning. Making your bed traps in moisture and allows your bed to be a home for up to 1.5 million dust mites, which can produce allergens. Instead, leave your bed messy to expose the mites to air and sunlight, which will cause them to dehydrate and die out. This is why you should never... Do you know what? I, I see that, that... No, I have to make my bed in the morning. It's kind of what I have to do. I don't want to come back to a messy bed. What should we do then? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I make my bed first thing. So dust mites, they're different to bed bugs. They don't bite you. They feed off dead skin, which doesn't sound so bad. However, the poo that they make, if you breathe that in and you're prone to asthma or eczema, it can trigger off allergies. That's why it's really important to get rid of them. The best way to get rid of them is not by not making your bed, but washing your sheets regularly at high temperatures, 60 degrees, or putting them in the tumble dryer vacuuming around the house, so getting rid of all that dust. And remember, actually, children's toys, this is one that my niece left at our house, they can harbour dust mites as well. So put them in the, in the washing machine at high temperatures. If they can't take that, you can actually freeze them as well, and that'll kill the dust mites. But please make your beds. It's a nice habit to be in. Just keep them clean. That's the key. Exactly. And that's good to know about the ice thing, because I wasn't sure about, about that, whether that worked. Now, look, uh, this is something very close to home, of course. Um, Alan Titchmarsh and Tommy Walsh, they're fronting a new NHS campaign. Um, and this is something that we've talked about a lot on this show, and it's fantastic that they're doing this, isn't it? It is, yeah. So people will get poo sticks through the door. We send off little samples of poo and we check for blood in it. And if there is any blood, then we'll send you for a camera test. It's all part of a bowel screening. Our Deborah did so much work on this. So if you get those screening programs through your door, don't be embarrassed about it. Poo on a stick, nothing to be embarrassed about. We should all be talking about our poos, knowing what's normal for us, what isn't normal for us, sending off samples, embrace your poo. And it's better <laughs> to, to, to not, you, know, you don't want to die of embarrassment. Well, exactly. Doing the we, exactly. We just saw we just saw some images there of our fantastic Dame Deborah, who we miss every single day. But this is just continuing her amazing legacy. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't be embarrassed. For goodness sake, everyone does it. Thank you.